In 1994, the nutrition world experienced a huge win in the form of the modern U.S. Nutrition Facts label. This became the standard for what nutrient-related information companies had to share about their products, making it more easily accessible to the everyday individual. And it does a pretty good job at that, showing relative amounts of the three main macronutrients and many of the most essential micronutrients, even later being adapted to include values of harmful nutrients like added sugars and trans fats. But it doesn't cover everything, and I realistically wouldn't expect it to. That would just be information overload. But there are several key nutrients and types of nutrients that are needed for optimal function that aren't listed. And unfortunately, your body has no sympathy for you if you don't know that it needs something. It still needs it regardless. Today we're covering one of those nutrients that I'm pretty sure you've heard of and that I can guarantee almost every single one of you isn't consuming enough of. So without further ado, it's time to get back into the true nutrients. So before we get into omega-3 fatty acids, let's do a brief rundown of fats in general. Fats are one of the three main macronutrients, providing 9 calories per gram, more than double the other two, those being protein and carbohydrates, which give 4 calories per gram. Fats in general are most associated with a few key benefits, aiding in the absorption of fat-soluble vitamins, maintaining function of your brain and nervous system, making up a key part of your cell's membranes, and many fats are often used for energy. Fats are organic compounds made from different chains of carbon, oxygen, and hydrogen. And those different chains are how we get different types of fats that your body handles and uses in different ways. The primary way to distinguish fats is by the presence of their double bonds, points in the chain where the carbon atoms are not paired with a hydrogen atom, creating a kink in the structure. Thus, the different amounts of these double bonds plays a big role in their type and function. Saturated fats, most commonly found in animal products, have no double bonds while unsaturated fats are defined by having at least one double bond. We can break those down even further into monounsaturated and polyunsaturated fats, which are defined by having only one double bond or multiple respectively. Our focus today is going to be on polyunsaturated fats, as we can break those down even further into a couple of key types that should be getting special attention. The first is omega-6s, a type of polyunsaturated fat defined by having its first double bond six carbon atoms from the end of the fatty acid chain. And the other is omega-3s, which have their first double bond three carbon atoms from the end of the fatty acid chain. Omega-3 fatty acids are considered an essential nutrient due to your body not being able to produce it on its own. They're used all across the body, but have an especially high concentration in your brain and eyes. A deficiency in omega-3s has been shown to lead to cognitive decline and several chronic diseases like heart disease, arthritis, cancer, and depression. As of now, there are 11 types of omega-3s found in nature with the main three being alpha-linolenic acid, eicosapentaenoic acid, and docosahexaenoic acid, or ALA, EPA, and DHA for short. ALA exclusively comes from plant-based sources. It's commonly used for energy, but can be converted into the active forms of EPA and DHA. However, the conversion rate is incredibly inefficient. At the very most, 10% of ALA is converted into EPA, and the conversion rate is even lower into DHA. EPA and DHA are found primarily in seafood like fish and shellfish, but also grass-fed animals and certain types of algae. EPA is one of the better forms of omega-3s and is known for producing eicosanoids, signaling molecules that reduce inflammation. And DHA is a very important structural element in your skin, brain, and the retinas in your eyes. It's recommended that no matter what diet you follow, you find a way to get on average 250 to 500 milligrams of combined EPA and DHA a day. The benefits of omega-3s are vast and are often much more than even advertised. Perhaps the most talked about benefit is the reduction of chronic inflammation. While some inflammation is a necessary response to infections, long-term inflammation can be incredibly painful and contribute to various chronic diseases, specifically heart disease. The next is probably its benefits for brain function. DHA is essential for the growth and development of your brain from a very young age. It's needed for learning and memory throughout life, and it's shown to prevent age-related mental decline and cognitive-related diseases like Alzheimer's and dementia. And piggybacking off of that, consuming omega-3s regularly is shown to combat depression and feelings of anxiety. Interestingly, EPA appears to be the most beneficial for this. And the last main function of omega-3s is its contribution to eye health. As I said earlier, DHA is one of the primary structural components of your eye's retinas. 
Without it, your vision will likely decline and you'll be much more at risk to permanent eye damage. And while the proven major benefits end there, omega-3s are one of the most studied nutrients, and thus several beneficial associations have been discovered. Omega-3s are shown to improve artery function, raise HDL levels, lower blood pressure, curb joint pain, especially from rheumatoid arthritis, contribute towards cell membranes, providing structure and interaction between cells, support skin health, reduce fat in your liver, improve bone strength, and aid with better sleep. It almost seems like more benefits from omega-3s are being discovered every day. Now, I would say the biggest downside of omega-3s is that it's a nutrient that a good amount of the population is going to have to actively seek out. The average Western diet contains little to none due to the most common foods not being very omega-3 rich. As I said earlier, the best omega-3s mainly come from the sea. Sea plants like algae and the marine life that regularly consumes it. Here is a list of some of the best sources of omega-3s that you would realistically encounter if you seek them out. Also displaying the omega-3 type or types and their concentrations per 100 grams and per 100 calories. You'll notice some of the best sources are smaller fish that encounter omega-3 rich algae regularly, followed directly by their immediate predators and the algae itself. You'll also notice a few of the best plant-based omega-3 sources like seeds, walnuts, and those dreaded Brussels sprouts contain some of the highest raw quantities, but keep in mind that this is ALA, the kind that needs to be converted to truly be that helpful. And again, that conversion rate is very low. Many larger fish higher on the food chain can also be a solid source, but they're also typically higher in heavy metals like mercury and are thus not recommended for regular consumption. The last point that I feel is worth mentioning is that grass-fed land animal products can be a decent source of DHA, much more than their grain-fed counterparts at least. This applies to grass-fed meats, dairy, and eggs from pasture-raised chickens, though some form of marine omega-3 source is still recommended, especially to acquire EPA. Unfortunately, even with a decent list of sources, plenty of people are not able to consistently consume those foods, often due to access or cost issues. Thus, many people turn to omega-3 supplements, and omega-3 supplements seem to be one of the least controversial ones out there. The benefits of omega-3s are at this point pretty undeniable and a worthy investment as long as you make sure to get the right kind. The first you're likely to encounter is natural fish oil. These come directly from oily fish, typically salmon, sardine, herring, and cod liver. They contain roughly 18 to 30% of EPA and DHA, the active forms of omega-3. They also naturally contain vitamins A and D. The next is processed fish oil, and the main difference here is that the oil has been purified and concentrated. Purified meaning that it actively rids the oil of contaminants like mercury and chemicals, and concentrated meaning that the EPA and DHA levels are increased typically being more than 50% of the oil. However, the trade-off is that it consists of something called ethyl esters, essentially making processed fish oil less absorbed by the body. Some manufacturers do go above and beyond, converting the ethyl ester form back into a synthetic triglyceride form, which the body does absorb well. These are known as reform triglycerides. Another option worth mentioning is krill oil, which is shown to be well-absorbed, resistant to oxidation, and very low in contaminants due to krill not being able to accumulate as much during their shorter lifespan. And the last one I want to talk about is algae oil. Remember, fish originally get their EPA and DHA from marine algae. Thus, algae oil is a great source of the two better omega-3 fatty acids. In fact, algae oil usually contains even more DHA than fish oil. It also usually contains iodine and is much less likely to contain heavy metals than fish oils. This all leads me to say that algae oil is undeniably the best plant-based source of omega-3s and is a must-have for all those on a vegan diet. For everyone else, the choice is kind of up to you, as there are health and cost trade-offs to each. But if you find that you don't consume enough omega-3s through your normal diet, this is one type of supplement that I absolutely advocate for. And the last thing that I want to talk about that I briefly mentioned earlier in the video is omega-6 fatty acids. Omega-6s are almost always brought up when talking about omega-3s, and when they are, people usually bring up a ratio between the two. Now, it almost seems like omega-6s are kind of a touchy subject at this point, but they are essential for optimal health, playing a role in producing eicosanoids similar to EPA, except these are pro-inflammatory, being used for the immune system. That being said, too much omega-6 can result in chronic inflammation and the various diseases that come with it. As we know by now, omega-3s are anti-inflammatory and are shown to counteract these effects, creating a balance. 
The problem is that especially in Western diets, omega-6s are in everything. Pretty much every product you can imagine has some kind of hyalinoleic safflower, sunflower, canola, corn, cottonseed, grapeseed, peanut, or soybean oil. And while in smaller quantities these oils are not the end of the world, if you don't pay attention they can add up real fast. The recommended ratio of omega-3s to omega-6s to avoid any issues is about 1 to 4, though the ratio is estimated to be about 1 to 15 in a typical Western diet, and we wonder why we have health issues. And there you have it, one of the truest nutrients there is. One that if you aren't consuming on a regular basis, you need to get on that as soon as possible. Omega-3s are absolutely critical to your overall health, and especially the function of your brain, heart, and eyes. Even if you have to take a supplement, don't miss out on this one or you will pay dearly. Now if you enjoyed the video, or at the very least learned a little something, I encourage you to subscribe because there's plenty more of these on the way. Go ahead and let me know down in the comments what other nutrients you think deserve a full in-depth breakdown video like this, and remember that all I ask is that you do your own research and advocate for your body. You only get the one.